The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Michael O'Shea and Alfred Drake in Pharmacist's Mate First Class. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Cavalcade of America. Tonight you will hear Michael O'Shea, popular young film star, as Eddie Cochran, pharmacist's mate, first class. Co-starred with him will be Alfred Drake, Broadway musical comedy star, as Brick Maney, Torpedo Man. Our original play by Stuart Hawkins is based on a true heroic incident and is titled Pharmacist's Mate, First Class. Before our play begins, here is a recently released news item in the field of chemistry. It concerns a dramatic wartime use of a new DuPont chemical compound called phenothiazine. 44,000 pounds of phenothiazine shipped to North Africa meant millions of pounds of meat for our army and the native population. Meat made available right on the spot. At the end of our program, we will tell you the complete story. And now DuPont presents Michael O'Shea and Alfred Drake in Pharmacist's Mate First Class on the Cavalcade of America. The major incident in tonight's play is based on fact. But in accordance with naval regulations, all names of persons and naval vessels mentioned are fictitious. However, we are honored to be able to introduce to you in person at the end of the broadcast the real hero of this true story of naval heroism and courage. It is 1938. On the sidewalk outside the Navy recruiting office, one of the two posters says, The Navy, your opportunity to learn a trade. And the other, in brighter colors, Join the Navy, see the world. The peacetime recruiting slogans of a peaceful America. For this is 1938. Your name? Uh, Cochran, Edward Cochran. Age? Uh, t- uh, 21. You married? Oh, gosh, no, do I look it? I was just asking. What schools you attended? Uh, I graduated from Tapley High School two years ago last June, and then I had two-thirds of a year at college, if that counts for anything. Two-thirds of a year? What happened to the rest of it? Well, I was working my way through, you see, and my father got sick, and I had to come home and find a job to take care of him. How does he feel about you joining the Navy? He died six weeks ago. Oh. Oh, oh. all right, Cochran. Fill out this form, take it into the doctor's office, that, that door there. If you pass your physical, you'll be on your way to the Newport training station early next week. Hey, Manny, I'll, I'll swap you a cigarette for a match. Sure thing. Why be formal? The name's Bud. Oh, thanks. Mine's Eddie. Eddie Cochran from Buffalo. Say, what did the lieutenant call you over about when he was checking our names? Oh, he was just asking me if I was any kin to Brick Manny. He was a boot here a couple of years ago. Oh, well, are you? Sure, he's my brother. He's up at Portsmouth on a submarine now. On a sub, huh? How does he like it? Swell. If I can't make the grade for the hospital corps, I might try for the sub service myself. The hospital corps? Is that what you want to get into? Sure is. Uh, but, but why that? Well, it's the nearest I'll ever get to being a doctor, I guess. I can't afford college and medical school, but the hospital corps will give me a chance to be an x-ray technician or something like that. Nah, that sounds dull to me, bud. Me? I'm going in for something exciting like aviation or, or maybe submarines like your brother. You know... Something with a kick in it. I wish I knew if they're going to approve my application for the hospital corps. Ah, you'll make it all right, but you haven't... Say. What's the matter? Baby, has that gob got a good-looking dame with him? Huh? What? Well, it looks like... It is. It's what? my brother. Hey, Brick. Hi there, bud. Come here. Come on, Eddie. Boy, I'm right with you. Rick, you old so-and-so, where'd you come from? Hi, a kid. We've been looking all over for you, boy. Polly, meet the kid brother. This is Polly Shewitt, bud. Rick's told me an awful lot about you, bud. I'm mighty glad to meet you, miss. Uh, this is my friend, Eddie Cochran. How do you do, Mr. Hi, Cochran? Eddie. Hey, Rick, do what do? are you doing here? Why aren't you up in Portsmouth? Well, I got five days leave, so I'm taking Polly down home to meet the folks. We're engaged, bud. Oh, gee, congratulations. That's swell, Brick. I, I think you're both lucky people. Uh, when are you going to get married? Oh, not for a long time yet. The family says I've got to wait at least a year. But I'm being transferred to the Brooklyn Navy Yard next week, and Polly lives in New York, so maybe we can talk them out of it. (laughs) 
Say, Brick, tell me, uh, how do you like submarines, anyhow? Well, listen, Eddie, I wouldn't be on anything else for a million bucks. Good, huh? Mm. I mean, uh, better than destroyers or, or battle wagons? Oh, there's no comparison. Hey, you look like you'd do okay as a torpedo man, Eddie. You ought to look into it. <laughs> I'll sure think about it, Brick. Uh, that submarine insignia sure dresses up that sleeve of yours, all right. Cochran and Apprentice Seaman report to the executive office. That's you, Eddie. Uh-uh. Cochran and Apprentice Seaman report okay, to Okay, sailor, I'm on my way. Well, I'll see you folks later, maybe. Cochran, according to your record, your previous education, your aptitude tests, you're the kind we need in the hospital corps. The, the hospital corps, sir? Me? Yes. Means hard study, but you've got the intelligence for it. And I'm sure you'd find it interesting and satisfying work. Well, I, I never thought about it, sir. I've, I've always thought of something more exciting. Well, there's plenty of excitement in it. And unless you've some valid objections, we'll order you transfer to the Brooklyn Naval Hospital for training. Well, okay, then. I, I mean, yes, sir. I'm willing to go if that's where you think I belong. The scapula, clavicle, humerus, ulna. What's the other one, Eddie? The radius, you dope. Oh, sure, the radius. Gosh, I wish I was savvy like you. Men... The responsibility for proper hygiene and sanitation will rest entirely upon you. As pharmacist mates, you may find yourself responsible for the health of landing parties in tropical islands. The malaria, affected water supply, and other medical factors may prove more deadly than enemy bullets. Unless you know what to do, and do it. Hey, Eddie. Hi, you brick. Hey, when did you get here? This morning. Say, what's that on your sleeve, kid? <laughs> Looks sort of good, don't it? Pharmacist made third class. Bud and I both got them last week. Nice going. Getting to be real dyed-in-the-wool little nursemaids, huh? <laughs> Anytime you want a grade-A dose of castor oil, we're the guys that'll give it to you, Brick. I'll bet. Say, what are you doing here? Has that pig boat of yours developed lung trouble, or is it you and not the ship that needs overhaul? No, oh, just a few days leave. I'm wasting time here. I just stopped to tell you and Bud Polly wants you both to come over for Sunday dinner tomorrow. Oh, you don't have to ask me twice on that one, boy. And Bud's on duty in the ward right now, but I know he accepts with pleasure. Ah, that was a swell meal. You can invite us over for dinner every Sunday, Polly. <laughs> How do you like that pill roller? While I'm at sea, tries to date with my girl. Now, <laughs> boys, don't start any arguments. Bud, go turn on the radio, huh? Okay, Polly. Say, uh, what's the name of the sub you're going to, Brick? Scalaris. Oh, she's a honey, Eddie. Better than anything we've ever had. Uh-huh. Mm. I'd uh, like to go aboard one someday. Find it a lot different from a hospital. When are you guys going to get some sea duty, anyhow? I'll probably get mine most any day now. Eddie, well, they want him to stay right here. What's wrong with the radio? We have a news bulletin. The attack on Pearl Harbor has been confirmed. What? what? Japanese planes attacked and bombed Pearl Harbor this morning at 7.51 a.m. Honolulu time. Well, how do you like All that? naval officers and enlisted men of this district will return to their ships or stations immediately. That's us. Yeah. All leave is hereby canceled. Shut that thing off. Shut it off. So it's come. It's come at last. Rick. It's war, honey. Your old man's going to see some real service now. Yes, you lucky son of a gun. What do you mean, lucky? He'll be right in the middle of it out there. You're the lucky one. You'll be safe enough. I'd give my shirt to be in his place from now on. But you two kids run along back to your medicine bottles, will you? I want to say goodbye to Polly. Alone, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, Brick. So long and good luck. Thanks. All the luck in the world, Brick. Thanks, Eddie. And listen, huh? you and Bud sort of look out for Polly while I'm gone, will you? Just don't let her get too lonely or, or worried, huh? Sure thing, Brick. As long as we're here, we'll be glad to. Laboratory. Cochran speaking. Yes, sir, I'm working on them now. Number three. It shows bacillus tetanus, unmistakably, sir. The glucose stab culture, sir. Yes, sir, I'll have the report written up in a few minutes. 
Congratulations, Eddie. Congratulations? For what, bud? Another stripe for the Chevron. You're a pharmacist's mate, second class. Oh, who said so? They just posted the order sheet on the board. Goodbye forever. Uh -uh. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Shake my hand and wish me luck, Eddie. I'm off to the war. You what? Yeah, sorry we can't go with us. Well, we'll be thinking about you, won't we, bud? Hey, wait a minute. What are you talking about, Farrell? Bud and I are shoving out of here tonight. Bud's going to a heavy cruiser. I'm on an aircraft carrier. You mean you guys get sea duty and I don't? Nah, don't look like that, boy. It ain't our fault that you're so good you can't spare you here. Ah, oh, nuts. Eddie, I know how you feel, but you're doing just as valuable work here, you know. Now, look, don't start talking like Doc Holbrook, you lug. Now, come on, scram out of here while I finish these lab reports. I'll be down in a few minutes and help you pack. <laughs> Hiya, Polly. Hello, Eddie. You must have been busy, huh? I was in the operating room. They couldn't get word to me till just now. Oh. Eddie, you heard anything from Bud lately? Well, not since that V-mail letter three weeks ago. Why? I got a letter from Brick's mother today. She'd heard from Bud Skipper. Bud's been wounded. Bad? He's still alive, but... Well, the Skipper said he hoped they could save Bud's leg. That sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? I'm, I'm afraid it does, Polly. It... How, how did it happen? His cruiser was in that battle they reported two weeks ago. Bud was at his battle dressing station near one of those anti-aircraft batteries. Mm-hmm. The dive bomber scored a direct hit right above him. Oh, that's a tough hunk of news, Polly. I, Eddie, I haven't heard from Brick in two months. They, those submarines can't stay out much longer than that, can they? Well, I don't know, Polly. I, well, I guess they can if they're cruising over close to Tokyo. They, they'd have to. Eddie... Will you take me to the movies tonight? Tonight? Well, gee, I'd love to, Polly. But... I've got to do something, Eddie. I can't stand sitting around home waiting and not hearing anything. I'm going crazy. Oh, gee, I wish I could, Polly, but I've got to study tonight. I've got a three-hour exam tomorrow. An exam? Yeah, Doc... Doc Halsey's recommended me for another promotion. You have to pass exams to get them, you know. An exam. That's great, isn't it? Brick and Bud are out there risking their lives. Bud's already got his. Maybe Brick has, too. And you sit here and study and get promoted. Well, now, look, Polly, it's not my doing. I have to obey orders, don't I? Yeah, but you don't have to lick the doctor's boots to keep from getting sent out there. Oh, now, Polly, Oh, I know, I know. It's none of my business. you got a right to look out for yourself in your own way. But, oh, go ahead. Get your promotion. I hope you enjoy it, you pill roller. <laughs> You sent for me, Captain Holbrook? Yes, Cochran. Your promotion has just come through. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. You probably wondered why we've kept you here so long in spite of your requests for sea duty. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I have. It's because we need first-class ratings, men with the knowledge and experience to serve on small ships where they have no medical officer above them. It's a great responsibility, but you're equipped to carry it now. You will proceed to Pearl Harbor and report to the senior medical officer for assignment. Thank you very much, sir. Pharmacist Mate Cochran reporting aboard, sir. Glad to have you with us, Cochran. Go down the conning tower hatch. One of the boys will show you your quarters. Aye, aye, sir. Well, for crying out loud, look who's here. The hospital kid himself. Hiya, Brick. I was hoping I'd find you still on board here. How are you, fella? How'd they ever pry you loose from that soft berth in Brooklyn? Huh? From what Polly wrote, I figured you were dug in there for the duration. Oh. Oh. Look, uh, where do they hide sick bay on this pipe for this paradise? It's up forward there. Thanks, Brick. Thanks for the welcome. I'm sorry I was so pleased about drawing your ship. You are listening to Pharmacist's Mate First Class, a story of the men of the Navy Hospital Corps, starring Michael O'Shea and Alfred Drake on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Eddie Cochran has completed his training as a pharmacist's mate first class and has been assigned to submarine duty at Pearl Harbor. 
On going aboard the sub, he finds his old friend and rival, Brick Maney, who, because of a misunderstanding, is resentful to find him on the same submarine. We'll surface in 15 minutes, Mr. Dashiell. We'll be dark enough topside by then. Yes, sir. We'll be coming up in the Jap's backyard for fair this time, sir. Uh, did you want me, sir? Uh, yes, uh, Cochran. Uh, will you go forward and take a look at Maney? He's off his feet. He's not acting right at all. I noticed that this morning, sir, but he swears he feels all right. Well, you're the doctor. It's up to you to give him pills or whatever he needs, whether he wants them or not. Yes, sir. Now, if your plot is right, Lieutenant, we should see some Jap supply uh, Pete, ships Pete, have you seen Brick Maney around? Here I am over here. What's on your mind, pill roller? Oh, you are. How are you feeling? Okay. Well, you didn't eat much chow today, Brick. Is your stomach upset? Nothing that I can't take care of myself, thanks. Mm-hmm. Well, suppose you let me take your pulse anyhow. Oh, huh? there's no need of it. I... <clears throat> What's the matter? I... I got a cramp. Judas. A cramp? Here, lie down a minute. Well, I'm okay. Double died dirty. Come on, lie down in this bunk. Come on, Brick. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh. Now, stretch your legs out. Come on, unbend. It, it, it's going away. Just a belly ache. Mm -hmm, just a belly ache. Well, let's see about where it is. Now, does it hurt when I press there? Uh-uh. How about here? No, I tell you, it's gone now. It... Here. Ooh! Go easy. Uh-huh. Touched it that time, uh -huh. didn't I? Yeah, put this thermometer in your mouth. Oh, forget it. Come on, under your tongue, Brick, and don't talk. I don't want to talk. Polly. Brick. Polly. Listen to me, Brick. Huh? It's Eddie. Huh? Oh. Hello, pill roller. You still hanging around? Listen, Brick, you've got acute appendicitis. Your temperature's 104. Is that bad? It ain't good, Brick. If we don't do something before your appendix ruptures, it'll be curtains for you. Now, I'm giving it to you straight, Brick, because there's only one thing that'll save you. What's that? An operation. Operation? Don't make me laugh. We're three weeks from a hospital. That's right, and I've never done one, and I'm not supposed to do one, but... Well, if you're willing to take a chance and the skipper orders me to, I'll do the best I can for you. You? I think I can do it, Brick. I've assisted at a hundred or more, and I've watched thousands of them while I was at the hospital. I'm glad you was doing something besides seeing Polly all those months. I... Ooh! Boy! What was it, Twister? You want me to try it, Brick? It's your only chance. Go ahead. What can I lose? <laughs> I'll use the wardroom table, sir. I've got things pretty well set up in there already. Was there enough room there? Yes, sir. But we can't stay on the surface or she rolls too much in this ground swell. Oh, all right. Take her down below 100. We'll be steady as a rocket that day. Stand by to dive. Pressure in the boat. Diving station. Both engines stop. Half dive on the bow planes. Half dive on the bow plane. Main induction check, sir. All motors ahead, 2,000 aside. We're leveled off at uh, 120 feet, Topper. Good. I'm already, sir, as soon as I get this last spoon bent. Yeah, that'll do it. What are those spoons for? Oh, they're retractors, sir. They're holding incision open. Uh -huh. Now, will you hand me that tea strainer, Skipper? Yeah, sure. Don't bother making tea, Eddie. I don't like it. <laughs> this is our ether cone brick. Lieutenant Dashiell will administer the ether. We'll put this over your face and fold this cloth over it. All right, sir, will you start dropping the ether now? Now, breathe deep, Brick, and count out loud from one to ten. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. All right, sir. I'm, I'm ready to begin.
Another retractor, please. Here you are. Can't you work faster? I've got to find the appendix before I can take it out, sir. More ether, Lieutenant. And hold that flashlight a little closer, Pete. That's better. How about it, Cochran? How much longer? I'm doing the best I can, sir. Ah, there it is. Quick, now hand me another clip. Right. And a suture. I've got it now, sir. I've got it. We're running out of ether. No more in the can. It's all right now, sir. Two more stitches and I'm done. Two hours. Seems like it's been all night. Oh, there. Okay, Pete. You can take those flashlights away now. Cochran, you better get some sleep. Oh, I'm okay, sir. I, I want to be here when he comes oh, out of it. Where would you go, Polly? Oh, he's coming out of it now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just hey, 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 a lot of night. Manny? Hello? Hello, Manny? Huh? Oh. Hiya, Skipper. <laughs> the question is, how are you? Me? I'm okay, I guess. Say, is it all over? Uh-huh. It's all over. Now, you've got to get well fast enough to help us knock off some Jap ships before we head for home, ain't he? Yeah, sure, Skipper. How about it, Eddie? Everything go all right? Yeah, Brick. Yeah, you're going to be okay. You'll be standing watching another two weeks. You... You sort of did a job, didn't you, Eddie? <laughs> Don't try to talk, Brick. Eddie. Eddie, I, I take it all back. Nah, just get some sleep, Brick. That, that's all you need for a while. Uh, I just want to say... Now I know why they kept you ashore so long. They knew what they were doing when they made you a... a pharmacist mate first class. And... I mean first class. <laughs> Didn't you hear me say no talking, Brick? Ah. I'll see you when I wake up. Huh, kid? Thank you, Michael O'Shea and Alfred Drake. Later in the program, Mr. O'Shea will present Cavalcade's special guest, Wheeler Lipes, formerly pharmacist's mate first class, United States Navy, the man who actually performed the emergency operation which was the basis for tonight's Cavalcade. Meanwhile, we want to tell you the dramatic wartime story of the new DuPont chemical compound called phenothiazine mentioned earlier in the program. Perhaps you've wondered why the 44,000 pounds of phenothiazine we mentioned earlier were shipped to North Africa and what connection it has with Tunisian meat. Here's the connection. When the Lend-Lease Administration asked the Department of Agriculture what material could be used to treat two million North African sheep for mange and worms, the answer was back in North Africa only three hours later. Recommended by the Bureau of Animal Industry of the Department of Agriculture, phenothiazine destroys many of the internal parasites that kill an estimated $125 million worth of livestock animals on American farms every year and cost farmers millions of dollars more in loss of their animals' weight. Loss by death and loss of weight are serious matters even in peacetime. In our rationed wartime world, they are more than serious. Sheep, goats, hogs, horses, and poultry, as well as cattle, all suffer from various internal parasites. And until lately, each kind of animal had to be given a different treatment for each kind of parasite. Today, phenothiazine is used to treat more kinds of livestock for more kinds of parasites with greater effect than any medicine known until now. Many American and British farmers who are using phenothiazine report startling results that nobody would have thought possible only a few years ago. Heavily infested animals so treated have not only recovered in a short time, but after treatment they gained weight much faster than untreated animals. We think this is a good example of the way chemistry is there, ready to help when an emergency comes up. Of the many chemical products manufactured by DuPont, only a few are ever seen by the public. They reach you invisibly in the processing of the many things you use. But these chemical compounds are at work behind the scenes just the same. They go to agriculture and to industry. And now here is a case in which chemistry is helping to assure the meat supply for our armed forces. 
Livestock producers who want the complete facts about phenothiazine are invited to write to the radio section, DuPont Company, Wilmington, Delaware, for a free booklet, The Story of Phenothiazine. Phenothiazine deserves its name as one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now here is Michael O'Shea, co-star of this evening's performance. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Alfred Drake and I have felt honored tonight in being privileged to, to suggest in some small degree the fortitude and the devotion to duty of that fine body of men who make up a little known but very necessary part of the Navy. I feel especially honored in presenting to you the man, man tonight's story was really about, the sailor who had the courage and intelligence and skill to save a shipmate's life under such unusual circumstances. Wheeler Lipes of the United States Navy. Thank you. Mr. Lipes, you won't mind, I hope, if I tell our radio audience that you were promoted to the warrant officer grade of pharmacist as a result of the excellent job you did under the orders in removing the appendix of one of your submarine shipmates. Well, a more important thing to get across to our listeners is an idea of the improvements and advances which have been adopted to protect the health of the submarine crews. Pharmacist mates serving aboard undersea craft are receiving special instruction in when and how to administer blood plasma. They receive intensive training, not only in first aid, submarine hygiene, and other health and life-saving measures, but also in the things that every submarine man must know. The medical supplies and equipment that are placed at the disposal of U.S. hospital corpsmen today are the envy of the men who were assigned to the same duty in World War I. With all that, however, an appendix operation is still a surgeon's job. I operated only because, in my judgment, it was a matter of life and death. My commanding officer agreed and ordered me to proceed, and Providence was on our side. Thank you, Pharmacist Lipes. She cooked and mended, scrubbed and baked. She cared for her children and worried about the bills. But the dream she dreamed was not to be one in untroubled sleep. Instead, a horror and a nightmare. Everyone knows her name. Few no more. She was Mary Todd, wife of Abraham Lincoln. Next week on Cavalcade, Miss Helen Hayes will add Mary Todd to her gallery of notable portraits. Be with us next week when Cavalcade presents Helen Hayes as Mr. Lincoln's Wife, an original radio drama based on a new book about Mary Todd Lincoln. The orchestra and musical score tonight were under the direction of Don Voorhees. Cavalcade is pleased to inform its listeners that Michael O'Shea, co-star of tonight's program, is now appearing opposite Barbara Stanwyck in the Hunt Stromberg production, Lady of Burlesque. Alfred Drake is now appearing in the New York stage success, Oklahoma. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. But, Mr. Painter, how can you paint this room today and have it ready for our guest tonight? Lady, I'm using Speed Easy, the new DuPont finish for wallpaper. Speed Easy? Well, it sounds fast. It is fast, ma'am. One coat will hide this dingy wallpaper, and it'll dry in an hour. Your room will be ready tonight, all right. You can wash it, too. Speed easy as one swell paint. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.